talking about it, and that's not from God, and I know better. You're in the wrong church, sweetheart. You need to be somewhere else. You need to seek the Lord and say, Lord, where is it the voice that I need to hear? I'm just going to do it this way because this is the ministry that I have. If you're in any church where, 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 where you're not hearing about your life on Sunday, if you have prayed all week long, you come to church on Sunday, and at least two or three Sundays of the week or the month, you're not hearing about your life and your prayer, you in the wrong church. Somebody say amen. Because God's going to speak. When he gathered us on Sunday morning, he called you together, he has heard your prayers, now he's getting ready to speak. So something should be said about your life. He heard the prayers of the people, he said, Moses, come, I'm sending you these people. That's what the book says. I mean, let me move on with this. That's another message. But I, I, I do. You should understand. Uh, you should understand the significance. See, I'm, I'm transitioning to a place uh, where I don't even know how to come back from. And, and I've come to this place, Michelle, where I need you, but I'll go without you. Because I, I keep telling my wife this, I, I can't do bad by myself. I'm crazy enough to make all the wrong decisions. I don't need you to help me to do that. If, I, if I'm going, if, if something gonna get clogged up in my future, let it be about because of what I'm doing, not because of what you're doing. Because when this time then, because of what you're doing, we mismatch. Amen. So when God gives me a vision for the ministry or a vision for my home, if you can't if you can't line up with the vision, you you're in the wrong church. And people take that, they get upset. They go and about who he's talking about and he shouldn't be saying that in church. God bless you. Amen? But when I believe that God gave me a revelation for general love, I'm going to say it and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my very best to make sure it happens. And when people, when, when that don't match you, once again, from the love of God in my heart, you are in the wrong church. I had somebody tell me on the phone, if I go to church and the pastor don't, and I don't agree with the pastor, I leave. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, then see, the problem is, God sent you to church to be taught. If you already knew everything, the church wouldn't be here. Right. Amen. That's right. So if you're running around town looking for a pastor to agree with you, you need to go back to your prayer closet. Amen. I don't know that for all this. Can we get back to this? I told you in 15 minutes. Am I happy with this? Yes. You're seeking to labor into the rest of God because you don't want to be in unbelief. I keep telling you all this, gentlemen, and I'm going to keep saying it. The only thing, the, the primary thing that God wants from his believers is to believe him. Amen. The primary thing that God owes glory to God. The first and foremost thing in God's eternal plan for man is this work is finished, I just want you to believe me. But we've gone through so many things and so many doctrines and so many experiences that we've been seeing so much trickery that we get God mixed up with the preacher sometimes. And we don't want to believe God because the preacher hurt us. But all he wants you to do, can I believe? He, I didn't ask you to keep all these standards. If I said it, believe it. Enter to my rest, ride the journey out. Before it's over, I've already given you victory. Amen. Just don't quit in the midst of it. So please don't, let us not enter into unbelief. What Israel said, why, why shouldn't we enter, why should we live and enter the rest of God? For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharpening into his sword. Passing even to the dividing of son of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrows, as the son of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now watch this. What is he saying? When you enter into God's rest, you are entering into his word. Do you get that? The word that was finished from the time God said, let this good. From the time God said, let there be light, this journey started. When you enter into that, you enter into everything that God has said and done and completed. And what he's saying is that word is already finished to work for you. And the word is quick and powerful, sharpening into his word. So you end the word using the word, now you're in God's rest. This word is something else. I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if y'all ever been in any trouble, but there's some trouble you can get into the only word going to bring you out of. There's some stuff you can deal with in the spirit that only, only, only a scripture is going to help you with. Somebody say amen. amen. And he's telling me that, now watch this now, in my eternal plan, my word is quick and powerful and sharp and into his word. There's nothing more powerful than God's word. I think that David said in Psalm 132, I will worship the Holy God, your holy temple, praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth. 
because he will magnify your word even above all your name. God has placed his word above his own authority. Can I talk to you for a minute here? I want you to grow up with me and stop just coming to church. He has placed his word above his authority to change it. When the Bible speaks about the name of God, it's not talking about a name we call him. It's talking about authority. In the name of Jesus and the authority of Jesus. So he said, the Bible says he placed his word. He is so committed to this. He said, when I release it, I can't change it. So you know the devil can't change it. So when you get a promise from God's word, or a promise from a prophet, or a prophecy from a prophet over you, that can't change. If you're connected to what God is doing, and you'll receive it. If you, if you don't connect it, you won't receive it, but it's not going to change. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharp and into his sword, passing even to the dividing the son of the soul and the spirit of the joints and the marrows, and as the son of the thoughts and intent. Now what's the next verse, Brunel? It said, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto him, unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. I think that's the best part of this whole group. God said, labor to enter into my rest. Accept the gift of eternal life. Don't go into unbelief. I have this. Amen? Understand that my word is quick and powerful. My word is sovereign on earth. But also understand this. Ain't nothing's a secret from me. Ain't no trick they can put on you that I don't know. There ain't no plan they can make behind your back. All things are open and naked in the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That tells me I don't got to worry about what you're trying to do to me. Because he already knows it. He can see it. It's a part of his plan to glorify himself. So it doesn't matter what which doctor you go to. It doesn't matter what you plan around my house. It doesn't matter what conversation. See, the conversation you're having about me or anybody else, it's open before God. Mm -hmm. Then private conversation, it's open. All things are open. Like, see, that gives me peace, baby. It really it gives me peace to know that oh, he can see everything. I don't have to worry about the trick of the devil. He just saw that before it happened. And it can only accomplish in my life what he wants for his glory. His word is going to overrule that anyways. The finished work of God in my life on this eternal plan. The devil can't change it. He can get in my mind. He can get to try to get me to speak contrary to it. But he cannot change because God can see all things and nothing affects his plan. Because remember, eternal life cannot be affected from the outside. So whatever comes into your life is supposed to be in your life. But it's open under the eyes. I use this in my prayer all the time. All things in creation, God sees. My God. Am I in the right church here tonight? Are you here, Nick? You be at peace. No matter what means they have, we see that. No matter what they planted, it's open and naked before Him with whom we have to do. And He's ordained it so it will not mess up His plan. But the key is you got to believe. Because what's given you is given you. Can you receive it? Mm. If you don't understand what I'm saying, say amen. If you do understand, say amen. The works are finished. <laughs> the works are finished. The works concerning your life are finished. But when we, when we get ready to live by faith, we got to live by the whole word. You know, it's not just coming to church. It's just a part of the word. It's about walking in the instructions of God all the way. And first of all, the biggest thing is receiving the gift of salvation. Because you cannot have eternal life without salvation. You are not connected to God's eternal plan unless you're able to go before God and say, it's because of Jesus that I can do this. If you're still trying to qualify, you don't believe it. If you're still disqualifying yourself because you're human, you didn't believe God. You believe in your mind. If you stop doing ministry because of some issue with you or somebody else, you never believe you got called. My wife heard me talking to myself. Uh, she said, what? I said, I'm talking to you. She said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to talk myself into going to church. Wow. People don't like when the pastor on us. I said, give me a break here, baby. This is loud. But I know I got to go. This is a part of God's eternal plan for my life. He, he put me to pastor this church. He made me an apostle. As I continue to journey, I have to kill my feelings, kill my thoughts, kill all my emotions, and keep moving forward. 
I had to fight off all that oppression and depression that came against my mind today. 